In this video, you are going to learn how to classify handwritten digits using convolutional neural network. In the previous video, you have learned about how to classify handwritten digits using simple artificial neural network. If you have not watched the previous video, please go and watch that video. Hello deep learners, I am Shan and you are watching Tech for Trick. So let's get started. Here is the copy of the Python notebook from the previous video. Here you just need to add two layers, convolutional layer and max pooling layer. Well, what is convolutional neural network or CNN? What are the applications of CNN? Let's see. In deep learning, a convolutional neural network is a class of deep neural networks, which mostly deals with images. So what are the main applications of CNN? Did you hear about the self-driving cars? No? Well, I think you are familiar with the term face recognition. Like this, there are many applications in the world of CNN. In this video, you are going to take the very first step to learn CNN or Convolutional Neural Network. To learn more about the theory part, I strongly recommend you to follow this playlist on YouTube taught by Andrew Yang. I will give the link in the description box below and I will make some dedicated videos on CNN. Now let's get back to coding. So here as you can see I am just importing the packages. I am importing Keras and then I am importing the sequential model from Keras.models and I am importing dense layer, flatten layer, conv2d or convolutional layer and the max pooling 2d or max pooling layer from Keras.layers and to visualize the dataset I am importing pyplot and I am importing numpy as np. Now let's run this code. It's done. Now we are importing the dataset. In the previous video I have already discussed about all of this. For you I am just going to tell a little bit. So we are importing mnist dataset from keras.datasets. It is available on keras. Okay. And using this load data function we are loading the dataset into these four lists. Training images, training levels will contain the 60,000s of training data and test images and test levels will contain the 10,000s of testing data. Now it's time to normalize the data set. Now when it comes to normalization, the data is in 28 by 28 pixel. But in CNN, we have to specify the color. The data set is in black and white color, so it will be represented as 28 by 28 by 1. One is simply indicating the single color. So we need to reset our data. We need to reset the images from 28 by 28 to 28 by 28 by 1. So as you can see, we are resetting the training images and we are resetting the test images. The size of the training images is 60,000 and the size of the test images are 10,000. So we are resetting 60,000, 28, 28, 1 or 60,000 by 28 by 28 by 1 and for the test images it is 10,000 by 28 by 28 by 1 and then we are using normalize function to normalize the data. Now let's run this program. So now it's time to build the model. As I said earlier we are using the sequential model. Now it's time to add the first convolutional layer. We are using 32 filters and the filter size is 3 by 3 and we are specifying the input save as 28 by 28 by 1. Now we are adding the max pooling layer with 3 by 3. What is max pooling? Basically it will reduce the input dimension. And then we are adding another convolutional layer with 16 filters with the filter size 3 by 3. And again we are adding a max pooling layer of 3 by 3. And then we are adding a flatten layer. And this flatten layer will take all the inputs and it will flatten that into one dimensional array. And that array will be fitted by the next dense layer. So the structure is basically we are adding a continent or convolutional layer and then we are adding a max pooling layer. And again we are adding a convolutional layer and then a max pooling layer. Then we are adding a flatten layer to flatten the inputs and then we are adding a fully connected layer. And in the last output layer, we have 10 neurons because in our dataset, it has 10 levels from 0 to 9. 
If you don't know what is activation functions, what is ReLU uh, sort marks, please go and watch these videos. Now let's run this program. So now it's time to compile the model. We are using the Atom Optimizer and the sparse categorical cross entropy and we are going to track the accuracy matrix while compiling the model. Why categorical? Because it has multiple classes to identify. If we have one class to identify, then it will be binary cross entropy. Now let's run this program. Compilation is done. Now it's time to fit the model with the train images and train levels. And we are setting the epochs equal to 10. Now let's start training. As you can see, the training has been started and it will take some time because of CNN and I'll see you after the 10 epochs. So after the 10 epochs, the training has been done and as you can see, we have achieved 99% accuracy, which is very good. Now let's see how well the model performs in the test images. So now we have to evaluate the model on test images and test levels. Let's run this program. And as you can see, it achieves 98% accuracy. You remembered in the previous video using the artificial neural network, we have achieved 97% accuracy on the test data. But using CNN, we have achieved 98% accuracy on the test data. We can say that CNN is far way better than artificial neural network. Now let's predict for the first 10 test images. Let's run this program. So what are these? Don't worry, these are the probability distributions. Now we need to pass it through the argmax function from numpy. Now let me just comment down these lines. Now we are just printing the p and let's see the result. See, it is printing the actual value. There. It is printing the actual predicted value. This p is basically the predicted value or the predicted classes. Now let's print the original classes. As you can see, both the predicted classes and the actual classes are the same. Now it's time to visualize the prediction. We have changed the dimension of our data. Now we have to revert it back to 28 by 28. So now using this reset function, we can simply revert it back to 28 by 28. And the rest are the same. Using We are using the binary color. And in the title section, we are printing the original value as well as the predicted value. So this test levels is the original value now from our data set. And this P is basically the predicted value. Now let's just run this program. And as you can see, here is the result. So the image is seven, right? In the data set, it was labeled as seven. Originally it was seven. And our model has predicted it is seven, which is true. And the second image, here is it is two. And in the data set, it was labeled as two. And our model has predicted it as a two. So I hope I was able to teach you how you can build a simple convolutional neural network to classify handwritten digits. If you learn something, please like this video, else give it a dislike. And comment down how can I improve myself to make more great and free videos for you. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to this channel. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, enjoy convolutional neural network.